Today's lesson is on rate of return. Average rate of return versus actual rate of return. My name is Monica Felton and I'm a CFP, a certified financial planner that educates families on how to get very efficient with their wealth. We make every dollar count. The term average rate of return is used exclusively in investment portfolios. So let's be very clear on what this terminology, average rate of return, really means. If I told you I was the best financial advisor ever and I could get you an average rate of return of 20%, would you invest with me? Well, let's put that to the test. So let's say you had $100 that you wanted to invest in the market. And the market had a great year. So that first year, the market rate of return was 100%. In your investment vehicle, you would now have $200. That's super. Now that second year, we'll take that $200. And the market wasn't so good. The market went down 60%. Well, 60% of $200 is $120, which means in our investment account, we would only have $80. Now, you started with 100, but you only have 80. Now, let me tell you the average rate of return of this investment. The way we use the equation for average is we take the 100% increase and subtract the 60% decrease and we get 40%. Now we have a two year time frame, so we'll want to divide that 40% by two and that equals 20%. So in this example, our average rate of return on your $100 investment is 20%. Now, I don't know about you, but if someone tells me I'm going to get a 20% average rate of return, I expect to have more money than what I started with. In this example, I started with $100, I ended with $80, and I don't care how you slice it, that represents a $20 loss. So, when you're talking about your investment portfolio and someone continually says, well, our average rate of return is, that means nothing. What you care about is actual rate of return in your investment vehicles. So let's look at this a different way. Let's say we had a $100,000 initial investment and we wanted a 5% compounding rate of return over 14 years. So uh, in this example, I'm going to compare a compounding rate of return, which means my initial balance will earn 5% every year plus the interest in the account will earn that same amount. So I started with $100,000 at 5% interest. At the end of the first year, I'll have $105,000. The second year, my $105,000 grows 5%. So the end of my second year, the value in my investment would be $110,250. Well, each year you're going to see the ending balance in a compounding account grow at that rate of return. So over a period of 14 years, this $100,000 investment compounding at 5% each year will be worth $197,993. Now, let's compare compounding rate of return of 5% to a market rate of return, an average rate of return of 5%. So 
So I'm going to change some numbers. So let's go in here and use historical data. So I'm going to look at the S&P 500 index starting in year 2001. Oops, 2001 and running to 2014. This is a 14 year time frame with an average rate of return of 5.09%. So let's use these results and see what happens. So in 2001, the market rate of return for the S&P was negative 13.04%, which dropped my initial $100,000 investment to $86,960. You'll see the second year had another loss, and it wasn't until the third year that the market returned 26.38%. Well, again, if we use our equation for average rate of return, which means we add up all of these and divide by the number of years, that gives us that average rate of return of 5.09%. Now, at the end of 14 years, we see a very different balance in our speculation or market average rate of return. At the end of 14 years, my $100,000 is only worth $155,924. Now, that is a significantly less number than my compounding rate of return of 5%, which delivered $197,000. So you see there's a very clear difference between compounding actual rate of returns and market speculation average rates of return. Now I know there's some skeptics out there that are saying, wait a minute, you're playing with the numbers because the first couple years were negatives. So that's going to skew the ending balance of my market investment. So let's test that. I'm going to shuffle the market rates of return and to bring it up to a positive. So now let's start with an increase of almost 30% on my $100,000 initial investment. Again, this is still an average rate of return of 5%. And we go to the 14th year and look at that. The number is exactly the same. You still only have $155,924. So it does not matter which part of your investment cycle you experience a negative loss. It will impact your overall balance of a negative excuse me, it will negatively impact your overall balance of an average rate of return investment vehicle. So rate of return is an important financial truth, but understanding the difference between a compounding rate of return and an average rate of return, which by the way is the terminology that all financial institutions use, is average rate of return is very important to the bottom line. Remember, we only care about how much money you actually have. We don't care about the average rate of return. My name is Monica Felton. I am a certified financial planner that educates clients on how money really works. We want to get you very efficient and make sure every dollar counts. My goal is to get families to their financial goals quicker and with much more certainty. Thank you for listening.